Andrew here and welcome to today's video where we're going to be looking at boxed NES console bundles. We of course recently looked at my World of Nintendo shelf containing all of my 80s Nintendo stuff including NES, Famicom, Game & Watches. Uh, I absolutely loved that shelf and at the very bottom of it was a cabinet full of boxed NES bundles and I believe I actually own every single North American NES bundle. We're going to be looking at 10 boxes at all, but that 10 also includes uh, variants that were released later on. Like, of course, the NES originally had the uh, Grey Zapper, so the action set would have had a Grey Zapper variation, and then later on the Orange variation would have come out. Uh, so we're going to look at all sorts of things like that, and if you're watching this and you know of a North American bundle that is not featured in this video, uh, please feel free to let me know down below. But in all the research I've done, all the collecting I've done over years, I have never seen a North American NES bundle that is not in my collection right now. So you're you're really going to get a complete history of just how you could buy the NES back in the day. So I hope that you enjoy that. And uh, with that said, let's jump right in. All right, so to start things off, we have the base set, uh, which only came with two controllers and no games. This was released in 1987 for US $89.99, and this is just about as basic of an NES bundle as you can get. It's very interesting to note that every single NES bundle includes at least two controllers. You'll see that's uh, ones that we look at later on. You actually do sometimes get four, uh, but it was a very common thing back in the day to get two controllers with your system right out of the box. If you look back to like Atari consoles, that was the case, and television, ColecoVision, Sega Master System, uh, even earlier Super Nintendos, it was the case. You just got two controllers when it was brand new, but it was uh, slightly later into the 16-bit era where Nintendo kind of looked at it and they're like, you know, we could make extra money by selling an extra controller. So they only started putting one Super Nintendo controller with their consoles then, and then of course that would carry on to every generation after that, and you would only get one controller ever again. So I just think it's kind of interesting that people might be surprised to hear that you always got two controllers when you bought a new console, uh, NES console back in the day. It was, uh, you know, we could play multiplayer right out of the box. And we're going to unbox some of these. Uh, some of the ones I feel are particularly more interesting. Uh, this is the base set. Let's put that to the side for now. And if you were a big spender and you wanted to spend 10 more dollars, you could buy the base set, not that one, that one's coming next, uh, featuring Super Mario Brothers in the box, which is pretty neat. Now, uh, what's kind of cool about this is that you actually got the complete game, Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, with the manual and box all in there, so it's a complete game. Where what you're going to see when we look at the action set and such later is that the multi-carts like Mario Duck Hunt or Mario Duck Hunt World, uh, World Class Track Meet, they didn't have a box. They had a special uh, manual which included both the games, but those multi-carts Nintendo, for whatever reason, uh, never made boxes for them. But in this case, uh, when you actually got Super Mario Brothers, it was all in there, and yeah, it's exactly the same as the other base set that we just looked at, except it has uh, Super Mario Brothers in it, and I'll probably put some footage on screen uh, of me unboxing that one because it's rather interesting. And one more variation of the base set that I have uh, is this one that has this red sticker on it that says Sports Set. Now that's kind of interesting, and you'll realize why as we get later into the video, but I don't believe that this is actually an official uh, Nintendo set. It's probably just some person owned the store, and they were trying to bundle like RC Pro-Am, I believe it says, with it. Uh, and golf, so they kind of just, you know, put that sticker on there and they just hand you the games from behind the counter when you bought it, but uh, I just think it's funny that someone made their own bundle, because again, I'm pretty sure that this isn't like an official Nintendo thing. I'm the only person in the world who owns this bundle. Woohoo! But again, you know, the sports set, there actually is an official Nintendo bundle called the sports set, so it gets very, in uh, very interesting and confusing, but with that, that's the base set, so let's move on to the next one. So next up is probably the most iconic NES bundle of all, and that is the Action Set, released in 1988 for $149.99, of course, including the Zapper, Mario Duck Hunt 2 controllers, and your NES control deck. Uh, this is the one that my parents had as I grew up, and yeah, I just this is how I got introduced to video games. Uh, I think you know, a lot of people have these, that's why there were so many Mario Duck Hunt cartridges floating around, and of course, again, it's one of those multi-carts, so unlike one of the previous bundles we looked at, where it actually included Super Mario Brothers in the box, in this case, it's just the cart. Any Mario and Duck Hunt box that you see is a reproduction, which I mean, honestly, it is kind of cool to even have a reproduction box for that, since it never existed, but uh, yeah, all multi-carts that came bundled with NES consoles uh, never had their own box, uh, and yes, this is, I just think, you know, so awesome. There's a lot of people back in the day who, when they grew up with the NES, this was probably the bundle that they found under the Christmas tree or in their birthday present packaging or such. And this is, of course, just one variant of it, as mentioned earlier, the one that includes the Grey Zapper. 
time released in 1988 because in 1989, uh, someone actually brought a lawsuit upon Nintendo saying that the Grey Zapper looked too much like a real gun. We can't have that. So in 1989, Nintendo redesigned the Zapper to be orange, so it looked, you know, more fake. And this is the version of the action set bundle that includes the orange Zapper, but it otherwise looks identical. Uh, but then later on, Nintendo actually released a third variation of the action set. Once the Super Nintendo was coming out, Nintendo redesigned some of their previous, you know, packaging to really distinguish the fact that the NES stuff was for their original Nintendo console. They didn't want it getting mixed up with their Super Nintendo stuff. They really kind of wanted to distinguish it. So here is a version of the action set which came out after the Super Nintendo had been released. And you'll notice that it has this massive red bar along the top that says Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, and you'll actually find versions of like Super Mario Brothers 3, some other NES games that had uh, you know production cycles that lasted a bit into after the Super Nintendo had been released. They really wanted to hit home that these are for Nintendo's other console and not, I guess, cause confusion for people who might be looking for stuff for the Super Nintendo. So yeah, this is a much later version of the action set, probably at least three years, you know, after the original one had come out. And I just think it's really neat that, you know, this exists. And uh, as someone who loves the NES, I love having these different bundles in my collection. But if you, again, are collecting NES consoles, just be aware that there are actually three different versions of the action set out there. And this one is definitely uh, quite a late one. But with that said, let us move on to the next NES bundle. I should also mention that those NES games with the kind of red labeling uh, along the top are actually less common than the ones that came out before it, obviously, because they were, you know, later in the NES's life, and obviously not as many of them were produced. Uh, it's not like they, uh, you know, garner massive amounts of money or anything like that, but if you ever have the choice between getting one or the other, personally, I like keeping an eye out for the red label ones, just because, you know, they're kind of neat, and you don't see them every day, and I think they're cool to have in my collection, but with that said, the next bundle that we're looking at is the deluxe set also released in 1988 for $179.99. I think it's pretty clear what comes in this one based on the image on the front. It's a super cool looking bundle, but my goodness, is it massive. And it is actually the biggest NES bundle, but only by a little bit. Uh, as you'll see in another one we're gonna be looking at, there is another NES bundle that is like huge compared to the other ones. But this bundle is really neat. It comes with Duck Hunt, and Gyromite, and all the stuff for that has to be in here, including Rob, the Gyromite pieces, the Zapper, two controllers, the NES control deck, and both of the games that come in here are actually individual games. It's not a multi-cart like Duck Hunt plus Gyromite. Uh, they're actually individual games, which means that they both come with their own boxes and manuals and, and such, so there is a lot of stuff you will find inside this box. And, oh, I just absolutely love this set. You even got a handle on it. I think this is, like, one of the only NES bundles that actually has a handle to carry it. I'd be very scared of doing that, though. Just, like, rip right through the cardboard. Uh, but you can see that family on the back having a whale of a time. Uh, and let me, again, flip it around to the front. So you can see the thing there. It says all the stuff it's supposed to come with. Uh, yeah, it is just such a cool bundle. And, yeah, you don't see it too often, obviously. And that's why in my... Uh, cabinet tour that I did uh, recently, I mentioned that, you know, having Gyromite in the box is so rare because if you bought this bundle, uh, that Gyromite big box was not inside here. It's just kind of the pieces inside the styrofoam individually. But the only reason you would ever buy big box Gyromite is if you bought the base NES set or maybe the action set, and then you bought Rob separately, you bought Gyromite separately, and then but if you bought Gyromite separately, it had to come with all those pieces that you would have just gotten by default in here, but not inside that big box. Hopefully that makes some sense. Hopefully uh, you saw my NES cabinet tour so you understand a bit. Uh, but this is a really cool bundle, definitely not one that's easy to find anymore these days, but uh, I highly recommend picking it up if you ever get the chance to, because it's definitely an eye catcher. If you put this in your collection, everyone will be asking about it, but with that said, on to the next bundle. Moving on to 1989 now, we have another massive bundle, and that is the power set. Uh, this one including the power pad accessory, obviously. And this is where you get that multi-cart that has Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, and world-class track meet on it. And of course, as it's a multi-cart, there is actually no official box for it. Uh, it's just the cartridge and manual in here. Very strangely, there's actually two variants of that cartridge. One where Mario has white overalls and a red shirt, 
as he does in the game when he is Fire Mario, and then one where he has red overalls and a white shirt. I have no idea how a variant like that happens. Like, does Nintendo print the one where he's wearing red overalls, and then they look at it and they're like, this is unacceptable, that's not how he looks at the game, no one's gonna buy this, and then they change it. I don't know exactly what happened there, but I've always thought it's just really funny that for some reason they actually released two different variants of that. But uh, this is a really cool bundle. Uh, and it's for all you athletics out there who just want to really get in shape. Uh, the power pad is for you. Definitely, you know, in these times where there's not many places to go, it's probably better than ever to have a power pad. And it's really interesting. There's actually a price sticker on here. Uh, that this was at one time sold at Zeller's. And if anyone knows uh, about, you know, my history and stuff, you'll know that these cabinets that people like to ask about in the background actually came from the chain of stores uh, up in Canada called Zeller's when they went out of business back in 2012, but this was sold, it looks like, brand new at Zeller's back in the day for $319.99 Canadian dollars. So uh, that is what you would have paid in Canada back in the day for this bundle, which again, uh, aside from the power pad, also comes with your orange zapper, two controllers, that multi-cart, and uh, the control deck. It is just an awesome bundle, and yeah, you can just kind of, you know, lift it, get some exercise that way as well. Uh, it's really cool, and again, it's really big, only just like a couple inches uh, smaller than the deluxe set which we looked at previously, but uh, this one aside, let's move on to the next bundle. Alright, so let's take a trip to 1990 now, where you can buy the NES Sports Set. Now, as you can see, uh, 1990, Nintendo's getting ready for the release of the Super Nintendo, so you start to get that kind of red bar uh, branding on the NES stuff, as to kind of not confuse people when, you know, they're going to be shopping for Super Nintendo stuff soon. When you ask your grandma for that Super Nintendo for Christmas, you don't want her getting you what, you know, nasty old NES with 8-bit graphics. Why would you ever want that? Uh, but this is a really interesting bundle, and and honestly, maybe not for other people, but for me, perhaps in Canada it wasn't as popular down as, as it was maybe down in the US, but uh, this is, for me, the hardest bundle uh, for me to find back when I was collecting NES bundles before I got them all. It was the last one I ever got, uh, and I don't know why. Maybe that many people weren't too worried about the sports bundle. Everyone wanted the Super Mario Brothers and such, uh, that this one just didn't garner as much attention, but here you actually get four controllers, so whoa! You know, you're ready, you're ready for some massive multiplayer action. You get a multi-cart that has Nintendo World Cup and Super Spike V-Ball. So again, it's a multi-cart, no official box for it, but it did have a manual, which included the two games in one, and you also get the NES satellite because of course the NES could normally only take two controllers so the satellite actually made your controllers wireless you can just plug it into this thing that doesn't have to be connected directly to the console just take some batteries you plug your controllers into that uh, and you can kind of play your games from anywhere which is kind of neat but yeah so this was all for you know the people who wanted to play sports games and it was typically the more sports games that you were going to get four player action out of uh, and not usually like the platformers and such so that's why if you're a sports fan you wanted to get that NES satellite and the four controllers and it's brand new uh, as it mentions but yeah that's just a really cool bundle and one I had a lot of trouble finding back in the day uh, so if you're going to you know go out there and collect NES bundles definitely do not pass this one up if you come across it because who knows when you're going to see it again but with that said next bundle so jumping ahead to 1992 now, we have a bundle that I think a lot of people probably haven't really heard of. When you think of an NES console coming with a Mario game, you probably think of Mario and Duck Hunt, but there actually was a bundle uh, a little later on that came with Super Mario Brothers 3. And this is, of course, you know, 1992. Obviously, you get that red kind of labeling again, and the Super Nintendo was out by this point. So, you know, if you were one of the kids that wasn't too worried about getting the latest Mario game, you could go back and get this bundle, which, I mean, has Mario 3. Still an absolutely fantastic game, of course, along with two controllers as well. Uh, and one thing you'll start noticing about uh, later NES bundles is that the blue on the box kind of changes. You kind of still have, you know, uh, the darker blue at the top. They also start getting into this lighter blue as well, uh, which kind of makes it weird when they're all on the shelf together because you have some that you can tell are the older ones, some that are the newer ones, but uh, they just all look great. And another thing, though, that should be noted about that bundle is the Mario 3 inside, of course, as it's just an individual game, it came boxed, but for some reason, the copies of Mario 3 that came in it have this really odd sticker down the middle that say, this is from the challenge sets, not for resale. I don't know if that's maybe because of like, you know, the games that came in the deluxe set, or if you got the NES bundle that just came with Mario 1 in its own box. Uh, people were, you know, taking the game out of the box and trying to sell it separately. I have no idea, but I just think that well, that's the most bizarre labeling ever. Uh, ever. 
you know, Nintendo trying to tell people, you know, this isn't for resale. Uh, I'm not sure what they thought they were accomplishing with that, but if you, uh, like, uh, you know, are a collector purist and you want your challenge set to be 100% complete, I suppose technically you have to seek out uh, one of the Mario 3 boxes that has that really obstructive Nintendo uh, challenge set sticker on the front. But yeah, I thought that this would be a fun one to introduce to everyone. Many people, again, probably haven't heard of it, uh, especially as it's a later bundle. You're not going to see this one nearly as much as you're going to see, like, the action set and such. Uh, but with that, we actually only have one more NES console to look at, and it's a little bit of a different one, so let's jump to that now. So last but definitely not least, we have the NES Top Loader, released in 1993. This was Nintendo's last-ditch effort to get some sales out of the NES, and it only cost $49.99 US dollars back in the day. So they just kind of really wanted to grab anyone who wasn't already into video games, get them hooked on this thing, and then maybe they'd go on to buy a Super Nintendo, I suppose, again, of course. You got that red bar along the top. It's the new design. Uh, I've personally never really liked the, do the, uh, the dog bone controller. Uh, overall, this is a very rare set. The Top Loader NES is not not a common thing uh, to come across these days, but there's not really any reason you would want to own it other than collecting it. Uh, overall, the video quality is not very good. You kind of get vertical bars down the screen. It only takes RF. There is no AV output on this thing. Of course, you could mod it, but then you know, that's either you have to pay someone to do that or figure out how to do it yourself, get the parts. Uh, so yeah, anyone who has been watching me for a while now will, now will know that I absolutely love playing my NES games with the AV Famicom, which is pretty much the Japanese version of this, but for some reason it has AV output on it. I have absolutely no idea why. Uh, but yeah, so this is just a cool bundle, very rare, uh, just to find the console itself, but to get it in the box, uh, even more rare. Uh, and this, to my knowledge, is the final NES bundle ever released. And with that, I have just introduced you to every single North American NES bundle that is out there. Again, if I am wrong about that, if there is one that I have somehow just never heard of, please let me know about it down below and I will get, you know, searching for it immediately. But I believe I've just given you a complete history of NES console bundles, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, please feel free to comment down below on your experience, maybe if you grew up with the NES, what bundle you had, which bundles you own and have collected for, which one you think is the coolest. Uh, I would love to hear about all that, and just thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll join me next time for something different. So thanks, and see you later! Thank you so much once again for checking out my videos, I really appreciate it, and if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really helps my channel out. With that said, hope to see you next time.